Hello and welcome to this video on Microsoft Excel. During this video, I'm going to introduce you to a, well, it's a newer feature inside of Excel, but as of right now, this date, today, it is only available to Office beta users. So if you're not a part of the beta programming, a program with the Office suite or the Office applications, you're not going to have access to this just yet, okay? Unless... You're a time traveler, you went to the future, and Microsoft has now released it to the masses, and you get the point. All right, it's it's not available just yet, but will be hopefully shortly. Now, what this feature is, we can now use Python inside of an Excel worksheet. Okay. Now, if you're not familiar with Python, Python is a programming language. Things like C Sharp or Java or JavaScript or VBA, Visual Basic. They're programming languages. Now, typically, when we think of programming inside of Excel, we think of VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. In order for us to use VBA, we can either record macros through the macro recorder inside of Excel, or we can open up the Visual Basic Editor, a separate window, and we can bang on our keyboard and knock out a sub procedure or a custom function and automate process inside of our Excel workbook, all through the programming language VBA. Here's where this new feature involving Python is a bit different. This feature allows us to now utilize Python scripts, program utilizing the Python language directly inside of a worksheet itself. We're not opening up a separate editor. We're not going into the VBA window, right? We're not importing whatever from some other system. We're writing it directly inside of an Excel worksheet, inside of a cell, like a function, like sum or VLOOKUP or index match or whatever it might be, directly inside the worksheet itself. Let's take a look. So open in front of you, I've got a simple little file that I'm gonna use here. It's called Python-01. Now, I'm going to make this available to you. If you'd like, you'll find it in the description just down below. Look for the Office new blog link, and you can download this file. If you have access to Python already, you're part of the beta, or it's now been months in the future, and Microsoft has now released it to everybody, great. You have access to the file, and you can follow along with me. While you're down there in the description, if you enjoy this video, you learned something new, give me a thumbs up. Let me know you enjoy it. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and get updates about new videos that I post to this channel regularly. All right, let's take a look at the new feature. So first, I'm going to confirm that I have it on my system. I'm a part of the Office beta group, and I've got a recent update. If I go to my Formulas tab, there is a section in there now called Python, and it is in preview mode. Eventually, I'm sure this interface will change a little bit because Microsoft will push it out to the masses and probably make some tweaks to it. But for now, I'm in preview mode. Now I can use some features right there, but I'm gonna ignore that for right now. And I'm just gonna jump into a cell like G2 here. And like I mentioned, you're writing Python scripts directly in a cell. So I'm just gonna say equals PY, open up a parentheses, just like you would do with like the sum function. But here's where it's a little different you can see that I'm now in Python mode within that cell. And if I look at the formula tab, you'll see the same thing up there. Anything we write inside of this cell right now is gonna be part of our Python script. I'm gonna start out doing something just really silly, really simple, just to see, see this in action. I'm gonna do some simple math. So I'm gonna say two plus two. Now normally, when you're done with your function, your, your calculation, you hit your enter key. Right? You use the sum function, you make a reference at your enter key, returns the results. Well, here with Python, if I just hit my enter key, it creates more space. It creates a new line thinking, oh, you're going to write more scripts here. To finalize a Python script, you're going to do control enter. Give it just a moment, and we can see that it gave me back the results. Two plus two, four. There we go. Now, with a Python script, defaults, here it's returned an actual value, like four. It's giving me the results of the two plus two equation. But this little icon off to the right actually is denoting that this is 
what's called a Python object. If I click on that little icon, it's gonna give me some information about what it returned back to me. You can see that it's Python type, its object type is an integer type. You can see that the Python name it is, a type name is enter integer, and it's returned a Python string, just a value here of four back to us. All right, we'll talk some more about that icon here in just a moment, but that's just something really simple. Got the Python function, and we could do some math in there, get results to happen. Well, there I did some literal values like four plus four. Let's try something else out here. I'm gonna drop down a cell, and I'm gonna bring, again, bring in the equals py open parentheses back into the Python editor. This time I'll make some references to some cells. Let's just say I grab cell B2 here. There we go, B2. Then I'm gonna do plus, and I'll do uh, C, C2, and I'll do plus, and I'll do D2. Right, kind of like I'd make references to cells inside of formulas within my Excel document. But now it's through Python. I'll hit the control enter. Ooh, look at that, 3600 matches my total there. So not only are we bringing in literal hard-coded values like four plus four or two plus two, but we can also make references to cells within the Python script or the Python function. All right, step further. Now here, I've got a simple little table, list of some bills, various months, and a grand total. I wanna make reference to that data frame or that data set inside of a Python script. So once again, found an empty cell, equals py, open parentheses. I'm now inside of my Python code, my, my editor here, and I'm just gonna click and drag A1 down to E6, just make reference to that data set. You'll see here, inside my formula bar and down below. It's made a reference to it, A1 to E6, Excel, just Excel. And it's brought in a parameter or an argument here for headers equal true. Yep, I've got some headers. Bills, January, March, total. Good to go. I'll hit my control enter. I finished it. Ooh, we're getting back a different result here. Now, remember earlier we got that little icon this right here is the Python object type. It's returned the object type back to us. If I hit the little icon, just click on that, it'll give me a preview of that object. So we got a five by five data frame. We got five records and we got five columns inside there, five by five data frame. All right, looks good. Well, now I wanna do something with that data. And we've got, actually got a few options here that we can do. Let's say I'm gonna drop down to just another empty cell here. Let's say something that I wanna do is I wanna chart the data. I wanna place that data inside of a chart. And we'll try a couple different charts here. We'll make this quick, just kind of introductory here. First, I'm gonna get back into my Python. Okay. I'm gonna hop up here and just select that cell that contains that Python object of a data frame, G5. Then I'm gonna say dot plot I wanna plot this data, dot, and let's do a bar chart. I wanna create a bar chart off that data. And I'll close a pair of parentheses there. So we're making a reference back to the data frame, G5 in this case. We're gonna utilize a built-in object type within our Python environment for plot or creating charts. And specifically, we wanna create a bar chart. So now, I'll hit my control enter to finalize that script. Give it just a moment here. Hmm. Well, I didn't really get my chart back, but I got back the Python type. If I hover, or if I click on that little icon, we will see the chart in there, right? Nice little chart. But that doesn't do us a whole lot of good. So what we can do now, it return an image type of the chart with that cell selected. I'm gonna go back to my formula bar. And remember that little icon shows up here as well the object type object or image. So here I'll give that a click. And instead of a Python object type, I'm gonna change that to an Excel value. And we'll give it a moment to calculate. What do you think? We got a nice little chart there, right? I thought my R's were bad. Well, actually that, that chart is sitting inside the cell. We're getting kind of a preview of it right now, but I, I need something much bigger, right? To be able to show that off. So here, next step, I'm gonna right click that cell 
I'm going to go to picture in cell and I'm going to create reference. And there's my chart. Look at that. Behind my head. Let's shrink it down just a little bit. Place that where we want it. Okay, but that's our chart. All based on that simple little script line inside there. Based on the data frame. We got a bar chart. Now, there's a bit going on in here. We got our Y values representing the dollar amounts. We got our X values representing some numeric value there. Well, those numbers actually represent the bills, but they're not using the proper labels. Right now, they're using an index value. Uh, actually, I apologize. That's not the bills. That's the months and the total as well. Right There's, there we have it right there. And those are, those are the bills. Let's try this again. Zero, one, two, three, four. Those are the bills. So we got the uh, rent. We got the insurance. We got the phone. We got the car. We got the food. But let's, let's make this a little more descriptive. And this way my mind can wrap around it a little better. I'm going to go back to my chart cell where we originally created that script. And I'm going to hop into my parentheses for the bar that we've created, the bar chart we've created. And here I'm going to bring in a parameter. I'm going to say it's the X. I want, I want some labels inside there. So we'll say X equals, and this should be bills. I'm going to hit my control enter. We'll give it a moment. And there's my bill labels. All right, there we go. So it is your bills, rent, insurance, phone, car, food. And each of those group represent the different column headers. January, February, March, and the total. All right, so we can create quick little charts. Now, just as a heads up, if you go search online, there's actually really complex charts that we can create utilizing Python just like this. Okay. Here we got a simple one, just a bar. Let's try another simple one. I'll find another empty cell. Let's just jump up here. I'll say equals PY again, open parentheses. Let's make reference back to that data frame. Again, dot plot dot this time, let's try a pie chart. Now, a pie chart's going to be a little bit different. Get back into those parentheses there. Here, I'm going to say y equals, and I need to tell the, the pie chart what data series it's going to use to plot. What data is it going to plot out? What data is it going to chart? So here, I'm going to say y equals Jan. I want to get the January data to plot out. Control enter. Oh, formula created circular reference. What did I do wrong inside there? I don't see any circular reference inside there. I'll hit okay. We'll give it a moment. One or more circular references. I, G5, dun, 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 dun. Plot. Oh, I think I know what it is. All right. I'm going to grab that, so I'm going to grab the border there, and I'm going to drag it down here somewhere. And give it a moment. And I'll talk about why, why this happened here. So now I've got, now I've got my image. No longer got an error inside there. But with that cell selected, I'll go back to the little icon, switch it to Excel value. Give it a moment. There's my chart. Once again, right click, picture in the cell, create reference, and there's my nice little pie chart. Now, the reason why I got the error earlier, circular reference, circular reference typically it means that you've got a, the actual cell that contains your formula within the formula itself. You're creating a circular reference. You're referencing itself. Well, here, the data frame was created inside of row five, and I made reference to it there. But something I'm finding as I experiment with Python inside of Excel is if you create a script up above something you're referencing, then you're gonna run into issues. Because that data hasn't yet been loaded fully if you're up here. It's looking like your Python scripts are running from top to bottom within your Excel worksheet. And I gotta experiment some more with that, but I believe that's what's happening here. So I just moved it down below so that that reference was already generated, already created, and then it was able to work properly for me. Okay. Let's try one more thing here, then we're going to wrap up. I'm going to go back to my cell that contains that chart, and I want to make some tweaks. We got some labels in here. 
right? Those aren't very descriptive. Uh, and I want some, some type of indicator about the values. So I'm going to go back to my pie reference inside that cell. And here, I'm going to bring in another uh, parameter, argument of the pie. And here, I'm going to say auto percent. And I'm going to give it a format. Let's see. This format, I just got to tell how, how I want it to format the actual numbers in here, the percentage numbers. So here I'm going to say uh, percent 1.0 F and then percent percent. And I'll hit my control enter. We'll give it a moment here. All right. Now we've got some nice little percentages in there, right? Something a little more meaty for us to dive into. But these index numbers, once again, those aren't very helpful. This time, I need to change a little bit more about the script in order to get this to work. I'm going to go back up to my reference to my data frame. And here I'll do dot group by. And I want to group this by the bills. So I'm going to explicitly tell it that dot sum open close parentheses. So this is a bit more that's going on inside there, but I'm going to tell it to group the data by the bills so that we can sum those values uh, and then plot it out. And this will change our index to those 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 to the actual label names that they should be. So I will control enter, give it a moment here, and there's our labels. So a little bit more involved in there. We've got some grouping happening in there, summing in there, to get those labels, so call those out explicitly. And we got some formatting for the percentage within those slices. So this is pretty exciting. This is this is still new. This is in preview mode still within the Excel Office beta program. Okay. So there's some things that we got to work out inside there and get a little bit more of a better understanding. But it's Python now inside of an Excel worksheet, directly in the worksheet. All right, hopefully you learned something new. And the possibilities here, where this can take us to, writing out scripts directly inside of a cell. I gave you just some simple examples, but we can create scripts that are 5, 10, 20 lines long that do massive amounts of work for us, all within the worksheet itself. All right. If you learned something new, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you get updates about videos that we add to this channel on Excel and other Office applications. I'll see you in the next video.